So our satellites are synthetic aperture radar satellites and what they do, unlike traditional satellites that take reflectivity from the sun, SAR satellites shoot out their own energy source that reflect off the earth and then are received back by the satellite. And so that allows um, the satellite to measure primarily man-made objects, but other very reflective, highly reflective types of features on the ground. So optical satellites use the, uh, the sun's energy that reflects off the Earth's surface and collects that energy much like a camera or your human eye. So typical optical satellites see the same things that we see when we look um, out at the world. So when we look up and see clouds, that's exactly what a traditional optical satellite sees when it's imaging the Earth. Unlike optical satellites, SAR satellites use their own energy and they shoot out that energy source, which is a different type of radar bands, and that energy source reflects off the surface of the Earth and is then returned back to the satellite. SAR satellites are the domain of defense and intelligence and other government agencies. It's a very complicated data source typically to be able to utilize. It creates, uh, it requires a very specialized type of person with a lot of training, specialized software to be able to use the data that comes from that in the past. But today there are more satellites going up and they're smaller in size than they used to be. Commercially available data that's out there today is from government sourced satellites that are dual purpose. They're primarily for government purposes and secondarily for commercial purposes. The data is very expensive. There's only a handful of satellites up there and so there's not a, a lot of data available. That's changing today because there's a lot more satellites that are going up. They're smaller satellites, they're less expensive, and that's really changing the way that people are looking at SAR going forward. Taking the, the SAR technology, which has traditionally required a very, very large antenna, which then requires a very large rocket to get to space, taking that and shrinking that down into a much smaller package, being able to take the very large antenna and shrink that down into a form factor that fits inside of a smaller rocket, being able to put multiple satellites on a single rocket, and then deploying those structures once they've been launched into space to get to that large antenna, is really a breakthrough that's being driven by Capella and other small sat companies. Well, SAR data is one of many data sources. It can't be used by itself. It needs to be used in conjunction with a lot of other data, whether that's optical satellites or ground-based sensors or IoT sensors or social media. It's, it's one of many data sets that can really help solve this problem, and they're all best used together. But if you look at what's going up, it's I think SAR satellites are going to really help fill in a gap, a key gap on global information on a regular basis. So it really is going to help out with with that.